What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's jump into the stories with new details for the next gen iPhone. Now, NFC or near field communications was rumored for the iPhone 4S, but it didn't happen. 9 to 5 Mac reports now that looking at the hardware code leads them to believe the next iPhone will have an NFC chip directly connected to the power management unit in the future iPhone. Now, Apple showed off Passbook in their iOS 6 preview, that's a gift card and ticket management app, and they could possibly plug in a payment system with the presence of NFC, which still hasn't taken off here in the US. An NFC chip could also allow a quick and easy way to share files between two iOS devices, even though the Bump app does that, and it's primarily only used between two guys. So believe it or not, we'll just have to wait until the phone actually comes out to find out more. Now we've also shown you plenty of the potential rear panels and rendered images from the rumored iPhone 5 that featured a smaller dot connector. TechCrunch reports it will be a much smaller dot connector port with only 19 pins that's more similar in size to micro USB. It's also being reported that the new connector will be magnetic like the MagSafe connector used on Apple's MacBook line. But what about all your current accessories? Apple or a third party company will come out with an adapter, but I'm not throwing a bad apple out on this one. We've had the same connector for over five years, and in order to get a smaller form factor or fit more things into the phone, other parts need to take up less space, and I'm all for this, even if it will be a pain transitioning for about a year. Because don't tell me you're not buying a new iPhone that has faster speed, has a bigger screen, and will talk to you when you're alone at night just because it's dot connector smaller. You're lying to yourself. Also guys, in news on the iMac front, several outlets reported that the all-in-one desktop line was due for a Retina display upgrade of its own. We're still waiting for them to make an appearance this year, but Instapaper developer Marco Arment's sources tell him the Retina display will not make it into this year's refresh because of production issues for display at that size. And for all the Apple biters who wrote in about iMacs, just wait for the new models this year. I expect them before the back to school season, and just because it might not have a Retina display, it shouldn't stop you. But what about a Retina Apple TV? See, I just made that up. It's not happening anytime soon. But a new report from Topeka Capital Markets claims that Foxconn has accelerated its schedule for ordering television-sized LCD panels from Sharp with hopes an Apple-branded TV set will launch in time for the holiday season. But I'm still saying early 2013. Now, we're also expecting Mountain Lion this July, and the date is getting narrowed down after reports from an Apple third-party tech support firm says there will be a vacation blackout from July 22nd to the 29th to support its desktops and portables division. This blackout could also potentially point to new iMac and Mac Mini hardware as well. Apple also released an update to their iOS 6 beta that's available to developers right now over the air. And there's a few updates you guys should check out. You'll now have a new toggle with the shared photo streams feature in your photo and iCloud settings. The Twitter icon in Siri UI has been slightly redesigned, and I didn't even realize the share widget that's part of the notifications pulldown, which is pretty slick. Also, in your cellular settings, you have a toggle to sync your reading list over a cellular connection, and there's plenty more we'll find later. Also, Apple has said they'll be releasing a standalone podcast app, but it still hasn't been included, and their podcast management leaves a lot to be desired. So while we wait for one, let's check out the best podcast app on iOS right now. Huh. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Tap That App. I'm Brian Tong, and this is the place to find the hottest piece of app in the mobile space. Now this one's for iOS users and podcast listeners, and it's called Downcast. On iOS devices, you can download a podcast through the iTunes store by each individual episode, but you can't subscribe to the podcast and have it automatically download on your mobile device. The only way to do that is if you use iTunes on your computer, subscribe through the iTunes app, and then sync your phone with your computer. What genius thought of that? Well, they might fix it in iOS 6, but Downcast for $1.99 allows you to automatically download and listen to all of your podcasts without the need to sync with iTunes at all. Now, you can add any of your favorite video or audio shows. Check out the top podcasts that people listen or watch. There's a really good one I recommend called The Apple Byte. Now you can also search for specific ones or manually add the feed link for the podcast. Now I like the ability to create specific playlists for your different podcasts, so I'll break mine out into topics like sports, news, and comedy, and there's a variety of settings for each playlist that you make. 
Now, during playback, you'll be able to listen at different speeds and scrub through the episode like you can with iOS's media player. But one of my favorites is the quick skip buttons that allow you to jump forward or backwards through the podcast easily. Plus, you can even set a sleep timer on the podcast. Now, you also get iCloud syncing, so all of your podcasts, subscriptions, and playlists will be synced up across multiple iOS devices. Boo yeah! So see, there's really no competition, and Downcast is the best podcast player app on iOS that you never heard of until now. Now, if you guys have any other apps you'd like us to tap, send them to tap that app at CNET.com. I'm Brian Tallon. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Oh. 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 Oh, that song just takes control of my body. All right, guys, we told you we'd answer some of your emails on our show, so let's just jump into them. The first one is from Peter O'Callaghan, and he asks, I'm in the market for a 13-inch MacBook Air. What are your thoughts on the Retina screen? Should I hold off or purchase one of the newly updated models? Personally, I would be okay with getting the current generation. I don't expect them to release a Retina display in the next six months because really, they don't need to, and it will be a good marketing push to tout the Retina display with the next update. Next up, Richard Mendoza says, Brian, you make me want to be a better man. You're welcome. John Sartain asks, why haven't we heard anything about the iPod Touch? When is it coming out or have they discontinued it? John, early September is the music refresh time period and we'll most likely see a combination of iPhone and iPod refreshes, so sit tight for that. Next up, Erwin writes in with, hey Brian, I'm just a typical teenage boy who doesn't have a good paying job and really wants a Mac. I think you should do a competition to win a new gen Mac Pro or Mac Pro Retina display for your viewers 18 and under. Take this into consideration. Erwin, once I find $3,000 plus dollars to give away, I'll let you know. And Scott Weaver writes in with things he wants to see. Brian delivering the Apple Byte shirtless. Well, Scott, here's your wish come true. There you go. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.